Hey guys, it's Todd here. So today I'll be showing you how the normal distribution comes about and why it's shaped like it is. This is just a video to give you the fundamentals behind the distribution. So it's not really got too much application to our course, but it'll help with your theoretical understanding of why the normal distribution looks like it does. And I'd say the most helpful way to probably do this is if we just consider a situation and we make a normal distribution just from this situation. So I'll use the example of the time it takes to drive to work. To work. So say I usually drive to work and I could record the times which it takes me to drive to work. So I'd say that it usually takes me about 40 minutes and I'm just going to record the time that it takes me to drive to work once. So I'm just going to do it once and I'm going to record that and I'm going to plot it on this x-axis here. So if I were to drive to work today, it, I might find that I drive to work and it takes me 40 minutes. And you know, I might say that 40 minutes is about the average time that it takes me to drive to work. So I don't really have any sort of distribution here. I have a single observation and it's at 40 minutes. I've driven to work once. It took me 40 minutes, so I record that here. And you know, this might have been a good journey. So I might have driven, I might have hit, you know, a few red lights. A few red lights, uh, you know, there there were no car accidents, I didn't have to stop for fuel, so I didn't have to stop for fuel. I didn't get any coffee, I didn't stop at McDonald's or anything like that. So it took me 40 minutes and this was a good good time, about average. So what I could then do is I could uh, record the amount of time it takes me to drive to work, say, over a week. Let's just say hypothetically I go to work every day. So I go to work for seven days of this one week. So I've already got my first observation and I know that it took me 40 minutes and I had no red lights or few red lights. I didn't need to stop for fuel and I didn't need to stop for coffee. But let's say on this next, um, over this next week, I go and I get quite a few red lights. So I hit quite a few red lights on three days in a row. but I don't hit as many red lights as I hit on the day which it took me 40 minutes to get to work. So it takes me less time because I've hit fewer red lights. So I've got these three days it's taken me 35 minutes and on the other few days I might hit the same amount of red lights as I hit on the first time I was driving to work. So it'll take me the 40 minutes on the other three days. So I notice over this seven days it took me 35 minutes three days and 40 minutes for four days. So I'm kind of starting to get this distribution forming. So we're not sure what it's going to look like yet. All we know is that it's taken me more time to get to work some days and less time other days. Then what I could do is I could record the times it took took me to get to work for another 14 days. So I might find that I've already got these times to work, so 35 minutes here and 40 minutes here. So I might find that this 40 minute, that's a pretty good time. You know, I usually get to work in about 40 minutes. But you know, on one day I might have got really few red lights and I get to work in say 30 minutes. Actually, let's say I get to work in 25 minutes. Yeah. And, you know, some days in this 14-day period, I hit a lot of red lights and I got to work at, say, 55 minutes. But these were really infrequent. So down here, 25 minutes was getting all green lights. So that's all green. And 55 was all red. And some days I hit, you know, a lot of red lights more so than usual, 
but still not as many times as I got this uh, average. So what I'll find, if I were to continue recording the times it took me to get to work, and I did it for say 365 days, I'll find something like this happens. That. Over these 365 days, I'll make it to work in 40 minutes the majority of the time. But, I'll hit good runs of traffic lights sometimes, and I'll hit great, great runs of traffic lights even less times, and then I'll hit phenomenal runs of traffic lights, and sometimes I'll speed and I'll get to work really, really, really quickly. And then on the other side, we've got, I'll hit lots and lots of red lights. You know, I'll stop for fuel. And I'll stop for fuel a few days in the week. And it'll delay me. And other times, I might get stuck in a car accident. And I'll be, you know, time's up here. But if I re keep recording this, and I was, was to increase the number of discrete observations to a really high number, say, in the hundreds, like 300, I'd find that I'd observe sometimes I would get really good times to work, say 25 minutes, but that would be really infrequent. The majority of time I'd get to work in about 40 minutes, and I'd have a lot of observations around this center column. And sometimes I'd be really, really late for work because of fuel or traffic or other reasons, so I would be really, really late to work, and it would take me a long time to get to work. But, what would happen is if I could increase the number of discrete observations over a very long period of time and get a lot of them, I'd find that I'd start to develop this curve, which looks like this. So, it's almost symmetrical. It's got a, an average value of this average time it takes me to work to get to work, sorry, and it's got these extreme values up each of the ends, where the height of this curve is purely a probability based on the discrete observations. So the more observations I have at a given time, the higher it'll be. So where we have few observations, i.e. it's getting me, taking me 25 minutes to get to work, I'll have relatively low points on the curve, and where it's taking me a long time to get to work, I'll have quite high points on the curve, this is the average, and when it's taking me a really long time to get to work, again it'll be infrequent, just like it was for short times to work. So if, 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 I'm going to erase some of this now, if I were to say take an infinite number of observations. So I was to observe, of course this wouldn't be infinity, but if I were to observe me going to work every day for the rest of my life, I'd find that what I'd get, and presume I'd keep the same job, is I'd get this nice bell curve. And I'd have this average value here at 40 minutes, and that would be the average time it takes me to get to work. So the bell curve actually represents uh, the probability of getting a discrete event. And the more observations we have, the more bell curve-like our distribution is going to be. So when you look at your bell curve, don't look at it as just a bell curve, look at it as an underlying story. So for us, we've got the story here of car parking, oh sorry, cars to work. And we've got the extremes up here, an hour to work, and we've got the extremes down here of say 25 minutes to work. And the slower the uh, height of the curve just means the less frequent the event. And that is how we derive a bell curve. So it's just a accumulation of discrete ob uh, discrete observations, and the more we have, the more bell curve-like our results are going to be. So I hope that is clear, and it lets you understand where the bell curve is coming from. 
Uh, remember, this isn't examined. This is just for your knowledge. But in the next few videos, I'll cover where the bell curve is applied in further maths. Thanks, guys.